Have you ever found yourself calling a baby a lovely wee win? Or perhaps you've gone out for a walk on a Sunday afternoon. Nothing too exerting, just a wee danner through the forest. And then you decide to get your pulse going by walking up the brae. Are you admiring the colours of these quieter days? A time you still know as the back end of the year. And as these autumn days grow chilly or cool, do you now begin to realise that you need, or could day we, a slightly heavier coat for when you're outdoors? Perhaps you'll put up with, or thole, the thinner coat you already have and hope for a white, mild winter. This has been the time to collect or gather up windfalls. And you might remember or mind the day when you'd help your friends to do just that, to gay a hand and to work together, together to bring the glut of apples in. Many of us grew up with this language and these Ulster Scots words still lie easy on our tongues. We use them every day to describe community, friendship, rituals, and aspects of the natural world. They're expressive, nuanced, rarely given to hyperbole, but always, always apt. And when we use them and celebrate them, they sing. These are the words we carry. We carry these words in our mouths in where memories o'er the years and in where hearts. We carry these words in our mouths, in our memories across the years and in our hearts. The oldest of three girls, I grew up on a wee farm in the townland of Mavinus, nestled between Garva Kilray and Achadui. My dad was a farmer. For a long time he kept pigs and a tiny herd of milking cows and then he moved to rearing drop calves and beef cattle. My mum was a teacher and a part-time farmer amongst many other things in charge of pigs, chickens and wrangling three small daughters into shape. These poems that follow in Ulster Scots and then English are a combination of memories, shared stories, and my own imagination as I move to reclaim my own use of this language, carrying these words with real delight and joy. The photographs are my own, taken through the year around the old farm. The first poem, A Farmer's Lunchtime Prayer, was written for my father who tried to get some much needed peace and very few vegetables during his dinner time. But with three lively young daughters and a wife determined to keep him healthy, he didn't always succeed. A Farmer's Lunchtime Prayer. Dear Almighty, Allow that these praties mun be sitting warm in the pot for me, cracked and flurry as I lift them onto the peace plate for Nesma Fudd. May the meat be saft and the vegetables only a wheen. And may we end we a kip of tea and a sweet bun. I'm blessed we three doctors and love powerful well. But may they be hungry and quiet at this while. And may this meal be mere than a wheen of minutes of rest and peace afore my work starts again. O oh Lord, grant that these potatoes may be sitting warm in the pot for me cracked and flowery as I lift them onto the peace plate beside my meal. May the meat be tender and the vegetables few, and may we end up with a cup of tea and a sweet bun. I'm blessed with three daughters whom I dearly love, but may they be hungry and silent at this time, and may this meal be a moment of rest and peace before my work starts again. Many of my Ulster Scots poems are observations about rural life, or occasionally are written in the first person, as I imagine an older farmer, usually male, speaking some of his thoughts aloud. 
An old farmer remembers love in winter is one of those poems, written in December last year, which imagines a farmer's winter deep thoughts of younger, warmer and happier days. An old farmer remembers love in winter. For why should I be afeard to be alone this empty winter to night, with a cowl moon awa abain me? Whenever I mind the heat of summer and the quiet touch of your hand, it's enough to howl me near hand and warm. Why should I be afraid to be alone this empty winter's night with the cold moon above me? Whenever I remember the heat of summer and the quiet touch of your hand, it's enough to hold me close and warm. A farmer's life is a long, hard one, and the work is unremitting. Spring is eagerly anticipated, and a good summer is a blessing. But it's the long, dark and colder days of winter that often remain in memory. These two short imagist poems focus on the grim reality of farm work at that time of year, feeding cattle that are overwintering out in the fields. I'll begin with winter ritual and then brumo, a term for something that occurs during the winter. Winter ritual. His bony hand, founder with a frost of money a year, breaks the morning ice for the base that quietly howl on near hand. Their starve and breathe, a frosted cloud of thirst. His bony hand, chilled with the frost of many a year, breaks the morning ice for the cattle that quietly wait nearby, their chilly breath a frosted cloud of thirst. Brumo. December empties its cell of light. The morning rises as a pale cow bird. Fingers burn on the yet a winter. December empties itself of light. The morning rises as a pale, cool bird. Fingers burn on the gate of winter. Cats are parts of many farms, more often as spoiled indoor pets nowadays, but for many years they would have simply been tolerated as shadowy figures around the farm. Hunters who lived outdoors and kept the rats and mice at bay. When I was young, there was a daily ritual that the older, more canny cats expected and that my father honored. Fresh milk straight from the cows after the byre had emptied and the herd had been walked back into the field. It was a treasured moment for these semi-wild creatures. This is thanks. Thanks. The old cats sit quiet again the byre in a morning ritual that leaves them ready for the day. These are the tithery beasts, seeds of the back end of the year gathered thick and wecty in their fur, cuts and scars for their money fixed at the scrake of day, yin lug torn half away, another cat blind in yin eye, tay wild for folk to handle whenever the rat bit back. They hunt hired, catch the vermin, keep the firm clear. Now the dairy is empty and the base are gone, but the cats be howling on, a half moon of hunters sitting wild still. The farmer hefts the bucket up, tips her o'er, fills their bowl, gaze them thanks as best he knows. The cats howl on a minute, then juke their heads and drink. Thanks. The old cats sit quiet beside the byre in a morning ritual that leaves them ready for the day. These are the raggedy creatures with the seeds of autumn gathered thick and heavy in their fur, cuts and scars from their many fights in the early hours of the day. One has an ear torn half away, another cat is blind in one eye. It was too wild for people to handle when the rat bit back. They hunt hard, catch the vermin, keep the farm clear. Now 
The dairy is empty and the cows are gone, but the cats are waiting. A half moon of hunters sitting very still. The farmer lifts the bucket up, tips it over, fills their bowl, gives them thanks as best he can. The cats wait just a moment, then dip their heads and drink. Not all my work hearkens to the past. My Ulster Scots is the language of people, of the soil and of the land. So it's natural to write about the world that surrounds me, marking the changing seasons and the light they bring. These next unnamed brief poems capture the changing year around the old farm. There's space for pace and thinking here. I learn patience for these quiet minutes and find that gift of morning light. Springtime is on its way. There's space for peace and reflection here. I learn patience from these quiet moments and find the gift of morning light. Springtime is on its way. Good nicht light o'er an April bray. The sun drops slowly down and tips new growth we gold. Fine evening light across an April hill. The sun drops slowly down and tips new growth with gold. Morning fire opens the sky. Hedges and grass fiddle we cow, soot traps a rain. A wild hare runs o'er the empty field to the safety of the shedded moss. Morning fire opens the sky. Hedgerows and grass fill with cool, plump drops of rain. A wild hare races across the empty field to the safety of the shadowed moss. Who it is to be lonesome as a tree at the back end of the year, bearing witness to the season's end. As light fa's lech and simmer is only a memory now. How it is to be lonely as an autumn tree, bearing witness to the season's edge as light falls low, and summer is only a memory now. October water. Light and shade, colours he gather quietly new, deep into the ends of the day. October river, light and shade, colours have gathered quietly now, deep into the edges of the day. Cow next light, the gloaming he's drawn down, soft colour, the air sharp and ready to snap. Cold evening light, dusk has drawn down, soft colour, air sharp and ready to snap. A quiet still minute atween therms, the land lies empty new, but the winter time sky is full. Sin is only a memory at the owl farm. A quiet, still moment between storms. The land lies empty now, but the sky is full. Sun is only a memory at the old farm. Crows gather in a guy cowl sky. Morning cows colour to this last day of the old year. Crows gather in a bitter sky. Morning calls colour to this last day of the old year. This final poem was read at the wonderful Francis Brown Literary Festival in Bally Buffet a few weeks ago. It's a meditation on the joy we gather from nature as we find peace and beauty in the moment. Thank you for joining me on this short Ulster Scots journey. 
I'm gay glad some to he had thee along with me. All life is breath. To understand these years that weigh upon us, we need to ken the morning air. Nay, mare, the fierce short sicha winter that draws kail air for the maw of the darkest day, nor the soft, sweet touch of springtime, wechty with the gathering scent of living things. No in the gold wecht a light at the back end of the year, when all lifts movement slow. No, it is the early morning mist howling that first endless breath of summer, don fresh bricked light that burns off quick, but in them first sweet minutes wraps us in endless peace, hope and joy. To understand these years that weigh upon us, we need to understand the morning air. No more the fierce, short sigh of winter that draws cold air from the depths of the darkest day, nor the soft, sweet touch of springtime, heavy with the gathering scent of living things. Not even the golden weight of light in autumn when all life's movements slow. No. It is the early morning mist holding that first endless breath of summer, that fresh bright light that burns off quickly, but in those first sweet minutes wraps us in endless peace, hope and joy. <laughs>